Today I will be talking about how you can enhance your Ansible development the solid principles. My name is Kirill Satarin. I'm a senior software engineer uh, at Red Hat. This presentation is a like, collection of things I uh, got during my Ansible development uh, journey. I'm developing the SAP Automation Ansible collection for quite some time now, and this is uh, what I've got so far. So what I will be talking here today. I will be talking why I think uh, people should use solid principles when they're developing Ansible content. What are these solid principles? How they're formulated for like general development? And how can we reformulate them for Ansible content development? And I will be saying Ansible content. I will not be saying Ansible code, because I hardly can say that Ansible YAML files are the code. So yeah. And then I will give some references. Yeah. So why do we want to use uh, or apply solid principles during Ansible development? I believe that will allow us to create Ansible, uh, more Ansible content, which is understandable, which is more readable, which is more testable, and we can easily change that content, and it will enhance collaboration among people who are creating uh, this content and using this content. So what are solid principles? How they are usually formulated for development? So solid is an acronym. Each letter represents one principle. The first one is single responsibility principle. Class should do one thing and should have only a single reason to change. The open-close principle. Class should be open for extensions and closed for modifications. Lisk of substitution principle. Subclasses should be substitutable, substitutable for their base classes. Interface segregation principle. Many uh, client-specific interfaces are better than one general purpose interface. The dependency inversion principle, sometimes called dependency injection principle. Class should depend upon interfaces or of abstract classes instead of concrete classes and functions. Of course, we do not have classes in Ansible. We have roles, and I, I will try in the next 30 minutes to reformulate these principles so you can and everyone can apply these principles to Ansible role development and Ansible tasks uh, development. So how can we do that? Uh, this uh, presentation will be mostly of demonstration of the code and how can you, Ansible code and how can uh, you improve it. So few things to uh, first uh, kind of show what's, what's the environment. Yeah. So first, this is a already public repository. Uh, all the Ansible content is packaged inside the collection. And collections are placed in Ansible underscore collections folder. Inside this folder, there is a collection namespace. In this case, it's solid. And inside collection namespace, we can have several collections. In this case, there is just one collection. Yeah. And of course, collection contains uh, content. In this case, it's metadata about collection, some playbooks, plugins, and roles. Of course, uh, collections can contain more uh, content than this. In this case, we just have some kind of action at plugins and uh, mod Ansible modules. And we have roles. I have several examples of uh, roles here for uh, each and every solid principle. And uh, for each and every solid principle, we kind of have an example on the left, which represents the content before we apply solid principle, an example on the right, which represents the content when we apply solid principle. Yeah? So let's start. So first, I would like to uh, refresh everyone on uh, how Ansible roles are structured. So we will start with a simple role. And role, in this case, is just a folder. Yeah? Again, this predefined structure, which contains some default parameters for the role, some handlers, again, metadata, some tasks. Usually, the main YAML file in the task folder is the main entry point to the role. So when you execute the role or call the role or whatever you call it, uh, yeah, this is the file which will be executed first. And then some additional content like templates and variables and, of course, role documentation in the readme file. So uh, let's take a look what this role does. And this is a very simple role. It just does one simple thing. It, it uses the template and uh, puts it somewhere. And uh, if there is a change, then it notifies 
so-called handler to say that there was a there was a change. In order to run this role, I will use console. So I will be quickly switch into the terminal like this. Yeah. So don't be confused. I, I sometimes switch quick, so don't be confused. So in order to run things, I will be using playbooks. And I prepared uh, certain make uh, file targets to run these playbooks. So here we have a simple playbook, which just will run the role. So this, this is most important code. We include in the role. We don't provide any parameters. We just include this role. So how it all works, you, you just run make help, make playbooks. These are all playbooks which are available. And we will be running each and every one of, of these playbooks one by one. So make simple will run simple playbook. It will take care about all the Ansible dependencies and so on. So this is what we did. We just uh, executed, uh, included the role. Uh, yeah. And role created a file. And because this was a file was changed, so the previous task changed, we have now a f uh, this handler. And if we, can, if we run this again, we will see that there is no change. This is an important behavior of Ansible. So there is no change. That's why there is no handler running. Yeah? And we can find this file. Th this is it. This was just created, simple.txt file. So this is how we're going to operate. So let's start as our first principle. And our first principle will be single responsibility principle. Ansible role should do one thing and have only single reason to change. So when people develop in their roles, and that's happened to me as well, I'm thinking, OK, I have a role doing thing. Yeah? And there's another thing that uh, is kind of related. So let's add it to the role. I don't want to create one more role. This is kind of tedious and so on. I will just add it there. So I will be having a role which does few things. That's OK for me. So let's take a look how, how it might be in the code. So single responsibility principle left. Yeah, and this is a role on the left where single responsibility principle in this case not yet applied. So let me remove the left panel so we see our role. So we are installing some packages, provisioning hosts, right? Uh, we are notifying administrators that yes, indeed, this host already available. All the packages are installed, and then we add our host to the change management database. So again, let's run this. Uh, this role. So basically, there is a playbook which just runs this role. So SRP left. And we are running it for three hosts, by the way. There is an inventory file, but it's not changing anything except creating some text files. So let's again open panel on the left. And in the playbooks folder, we see result of our role. So we created uh, some packages on, on the host. We updated our CMDB. Uh, sorry. Yeah. So this is, and of course, we notified uh, administrators. So this is a result of our role. So, but this role clearly has a lot of reasons to change. If we somehow want to not not notify administrators in using email, but Slack or any other tool, we have to change the role. If we want to install some other dependencies or not only packages but some files, we have to change the role. If we want to use another CMDB tool, we have to change the same role. Yeah? So how can we avoid that? These this are a lot of reasons to change. And this will force us, in the long run, to update this role often, retest this role, uh, spend a lot of time maintaining it. So how can we change that? So let's go to the, our SRP write example and see how it might look like. Oh, sorry. Not meta file. So instead of uh, having one role doing a lot of things, we can have one role which calls other roles, like this, including them, which are doing specific things. So this role, SRP packages, only installs packages. Role to notify administrators, SRP notify, only notifies administrators. And we don't, want, we don't have to 
change the role, the main ro SRP left role, if we are, uh, sorry, SRP right role, if we are only updating how the way how we notify admins, right? So let's see how this new SRP left, le uh, right role working. So first I will clean everything. So I will remove all the text files created. It's doing exactly the same. The only difference is that here we include the role and then we include another role once again. So this, this is actually, these two lines is, is the difference. This is also additional line in output and this is two additional lines in output. These are two, just few more lines in output but man maintainability of the whole structure is actually much more uh, much better now because we don't have to change role every time and we don't have to retest it every time and not every change introduces errors everywhere this is our first principle so let's jump to the next principle single uh, ansible role should be open for extensions and closed for modifications so this is I think very important principle again uh, when we develop in a role we don't develop it just for one operating system, just for one version. We try to implement to implement a role in a way that it can work on any host in our landscape. So it, that, uh, of course, includes a lot of versions, operating system, uh, operating systems, and so on. So let's look at this role. Roles. Open close. So for open close, we have two tasks, two entry points on the left and on the right. So here we are doing certain tasks for different operating system family uh, families. Yeah. And these task files are in tasks tasks. So it's actually doesn't much uh, doesn't matter what they are doing. So let's run this role and see how it looks like. Make So what did we do here? How does it look like? So we're running the role for all three hosts. And for the host two, this is a rel host. We are skipping everything else. For the host three, this is a SUSE host. We are skipping first two hosts. So for the tasks, two tasks. Yeah? And the same for the host one, we are skipping other tasks. Uh, this is, from my point of view, quite confusing for the consumer and it's also quite cons confusing to look at this code because like, I'm not interested in all of these tasks. Yeah? I'm interested in tasks related to Red Hat. And here is a, just a simple example, these three tasks. Now imagine you have 20, 50 tasks and each task is marked as this when and you don't know which task is running actually when. Yeah. So let's try to improve this using open close principle and he, uh, one more remark here if you want to add one more operating system family you would have to change this file yeah S for instance if we would like to add windows we would have to add one more line one more task here and of course our output will be uh, even more extended yeah so let's see how it, we can improve it open close right so what we can do Again, I will remove call, uh, left panel. What we can do, we can just run depending on OS family. This role, this ta uh, task file does exactly the same. Yeah? But we don't have to change it at all if we want to add Windows or any other operating system. Right? We just add one more file. So the role becomes open for extension but closed for modification. We don't have to change it. Yeah? And clearly, uh, uh, f at least it's clear for me, I don't know if you agree with me, you have to test l much less code if you are changing the role this way. Yeah? Because you are basically ch checking just one task file. So let's see how th this role execution looks like. So again, I'm writing the playbook which just runs this role. 
Mm -hmm. So this is quite interesting. So what we are doing now, we are uh, running again the role, and then we include in different tasks. And here, for the host one, we just run in one task. We are not skipping anything. So this is, I think, much clearer output, and this is like for humans, is much easier to handle, much easier to comprehend. You clearly know which task you are running compared to the file with the 20, 50 tasks and every third task you're just running. Yeah. With that, let's keep, uh, let's switch to second, or third, sorry, principle. And this is Liskov substitution principle. And this formulated for general development quite complex. It's formulated uh, using classes and we cle classes and inheritance. And we clearly do not have any inheritance in the Ansible code and in, in, in the Ansible content and the roles. Yeah? So I would reformulate this. Uh, one should be able to reuse Ansible role task files where it makes sense. So let me explain what, what I mean by this. A list of substitution. For each and every role since Sensible 2.11, I think, you can create so-called argument specification file. And this argument specification file, along with arguments, so here we have arguments or variables required to run this role, you can define so-called entry points. So this is the main entry point, and then we have left entry point. And entry points are just files in this case, main YAML and left YAML in the tasks folder below the role. Yeah. So this argument specification basically says that if you want to run main, you have to provide this argument, sorry, this parameter. If you have to provide run left, you have to uh, provide this parameter. Yeah. So this role actually works if you call main. But what will happen if we call directly left. No, sorry. So even though we have this validation and there is if arguments argument specs file present, the there is always pre validation task. We have this argument validation. We have this argument validation and it passes. Yeah. We run task with variable not defined. So definitely there will be no pleasant outcome of running this task, something will go wrong. Yeah. And this is uh, what I would reformulate as a list of substitution principle for Ansible. So if you're making certain entry points for your role public, please make sure that people from outside can actually call them and use them. So let's run our write role. And of course, this, this works fine. Yeah. Switching to the next one. Interface segregation principle. Many specific Ansible roles are better than one role that does everything. So of course this seems like uh, related to single responsibility principle. Yeah. Uh, in my experience, there are situations still then you want to create one single role which does like related tasks. It might be just because you don't want to handle a lot of uh, toil work related to creating the role, creating the documentation, and if these are related tasks, then the parameters will be the same or similar, and and so on. Yeah. And for roles, unfortunately, there are no easy way to reuse documentation for, for the roles. Yeah? For plugins and, mod and uh, models there is, but for roles unfortunately there isn't. So sometimes this is required to have one role that might do uh, a lot of things. And of course if one role does a lot of things, then this role will have a lot of parameters. So let's look at example. So again our example interface uh, segregation left, we have one role which takes three parameters. And these are not just random parameters, so uh, these are actually quite well-defined parameters. So we have first parameter, these two values. We have second parameter, there's just two values. And we have third parameter. There's again just two allowed values. 
So we have parameters 1 or 2, alpha or beta, or, and A or B. Yeah? So we have three parameters. So let's run our role. What it does, and of course, it just outputs parameters. And as you can see, we just used one uh, uh, scenario, yeah, one alpha A. But there are a lot of scenarios, so we would want to test this role at some point, and we would like to cover all the possible scenarios. So let's see how it might look like. For that, I prepared playbook to test this role. And this playbook just executes this role, so it includes the role and tries to loop of all possible parameter values. So we again have, for parameter 1, we have 1, 2, alpha, beta, a, b for respective parameters. And of course, we will see at least 8 calls there. Yeah, so let's see that. Let's try to test it. Yeah, quite a lot of output. The important thing is here. Yeah? We included the role eight times in order to test this. So let's see our right example and how can we test it. Yeah, so interface segregation right, task file. So here I'm trying to s segregate this parameter. So we have like sub roles, or in this case, entry points. They might not be public. Because you are testing, you're aware of the internals of the role. You don't have to expose them publicly and allow external people uh, or Ansible content consumers to call them. You just know that these are kind of related parameters. Yeah. So we have this, again, just printing parameter. So let's run it. So this role does exactly the same. It just prints our parameters, or in more realistic example, just acts something. Yeah. Oops, sorry. So let's test it. What would be the difference? And difference from my point of view is huge, because we are testing individual uh, task files, because we segregated the parameters. We now have only six text tests to run. Three parameters, two values for each. Doesn't seem much in this case, but uh, in the real life where it's much more parameters, this might be beneficial for speeding up the development and testing. Switching to the next principle. And the next principle is, uh, I would say, the hardest of them all, from even from uh, general development perspective, it's dependency inversion or dependency injection principle. Uh, so I would reformulate it for, for Ansible that Ansible should separate installation and configuration tasks. Yeah? And I think using this, it's, first, it's very simple to do that, uh, using just task files and including them. And second, it provides some benefits for the testing. So let's take a look at, look at example. So we have, again, our left example here. I removed the left panel. So what we are doing here? First, we are installing some dependencies, binary dependencies, and then we are deploying an application using these binary dependencies. This is like uh, one, one execution. And then we have another option. We, we don't always install uh, PIP packages, for instance, as binary dependencies. We also install them as PIP packages, so using requirements files. So this is the second way of how we can do that. And of course, here we use requirements file. And again, we can deploy application. So let's run it. Uh, sorry. Hmm. Yeah. 
So let's look at our dependency inversion example on, on the right hand side. So here I separated installation, this is installation task, from the actual deployment. And here, as you can see, we're just installing binary dependencies, not pip dependencies. And I would argue that this allows to more easily test and uh, test this actual application deployment task because we do not now depend on the way we install packages. We can just call this file separately from outside. So use our deploy uh, entry point for the role and check what will happen if something will go wrong. Yeah? So we can actually introduce some misconfigurations here, which actually will happen even though this is Ansible and we are trying to, uh, Ansible is uh, making sure that everything is uh, as declared. Yeah? These things can happen and this allows again creators of the content test what will happen if something will go wrong. So let's run this example. And of course it also installs dependence, in, installs necessary dependencies and uh, deploys an application. With that we conclude all, all the solid principles. So let, let's have a quick recap. So I would reformulate the solid principles for Ansible content this way. Ansible role should do one thing and have only a single reason for a change. Ansible role should be open for extensions and closed to modifications. One should be able to reuse Ansible role task files where it makes sense. Many specific Ansible roles are better than one role that does everything. And Ansible role should separate installation and configuration tasks. And of course, in the last example, you can separate them on task files, you can separate them in different roles. There are different ways. All the ways I, I demonstrated, they are not the only ways to do that. And I believe that doing so, applying these principles to content you develop, will allow you to create more readable, more testable content quickly, and will, this content might be reused much more. So some references. You can access the, re the repository with all the examples and run them by yourself. It just requires Python and Make as dependencies. Everything will uh, uh, run. I encourage you to read about the solid principles and apply them in your work, even if you are not developer, are just creating the content. So thank you very much for your time, and I'm open to the questions. Yeah. Sorry, I, I can't hear you. Sorry. Okay, so the question is, uh, are there any suggestions on how to collaborate using uh, in Ansible content uh, and what, what's my experience? So uh, I would say that be, uh, like, I don't have maybe examples of the collaboration and how it can uh, help this collaboration, but what I do see in my experience is that after I started thinking th in these ways, yeah, and applying these principles because of the segregation, because I have separate task files or roles for different things, I have much less merge conflicts. Just simple as that. And I think th this by itself is, uh, will help collaboration because th all the rough edges, they happen usually during merge conflicts and so on. Yeah? And bugs are also introduced there, but here, because you are separating responsibilities, creating this open clause, you don't have to change the file uh, because some people also might 
add more tasks there so there is no conflict and so on. This, I think, might improve this uh, merge conflict situation. Sure. Yeah, so the question was uh, uh, person in the audience using playbooks and the tags in these playbooks in order to run certain parts of the, of the playbook uh, for installation and deployment tasks to kind of separate them this way. Yeah, so, and the question is how can, can we maybe do this better? Yeah, if I understand this yeah. correctly. Yeah, so my point of view is uh, tags are fine. Yeah, the problem with tags, at least as I see it, they are fine for the computers. But if you see, like, playbook with 50 tasks, and there are three tags, and each task is marked as a tag, it's really hard for the person to read of all of these 50 tasks and understand which will actually run. And uh, not so, like, separating in other ways, like in task files and uh, roles, I think will decrease cognitive complexity for the human to read this code. Yeah. So that's my take on it. Uh, so tasks, uh, tags, sorry, tags are fine in the playbooks and in the roles and so on, but they're fine for the computers. Computer will not make a mistake in here, but a person might just skip, uh, yeah. And if you're saying these are different tasks, yeah, then create a role. From the playbook? Ah, okay, sorry. Uh, like like this, tasks from, does it answer you? Uh, sorry. Like this, so you can include certain task file. From the playbook you can do. So this is what uh, Liskov substitution principle. So if you are, if you are allowing your users, your content, uh, Ansible content users, to call your task files from the outside of the role, yeah, you please make sure that this is like uh, deliverable content, it's tested, the, this task file, yeah. Again, thank you very much for your time and for your questions. <laughs>